Welcome to FinSuite Cookie Consent for Webflow. I'm Joe Krug, founder of FinSuite. I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about cookie consent in Webflow. Welcome to the informational cookie message option one walkthrough. We're going to walk through how to set up an informational cookie message on your Webflow site using FinSuite Cookie Consent for Webflow. This is not GDPR compliant. Please be aware of that. If you're from the EU, this is not an appropriate option. If you are from the US, we see a lot of companies using this, and this may be okay for the company you're doing work for. This is not a recommendation to do this or not a recommendation. This is just an option that you have when alerting cookies, alerting users about cookies. Let's get into it. We are going to go in the docs, in the setup, and we're going to follow the steps for option one, informational cookie message. I'll go and click on this, and we see a nice bar, a nice cookie banner to go and build in our project. I'm not going to read through this. If you're interested in understanding everything here, please go and read through it. The most important thing you have to know is this is not allowing the user to opt in or opt out or change their options. This is only telling the user, hey, we're using cookies on the site, okay. That's it, you just have an okay, got it. Here in the example, we're using awesome. That's all you do here and that's it. There is no other option. So that is, that's what makes it not GDPR compliant. All right, step one, let's build the cookie banner in Webflow. So we do have a clonable build. If you do not want to build this yourself, you want a copy paste option, go to the clonable build, copy paste it. There's a video on that specifically. I will go inside a fresh blank Webflow project and I'm going to start building this banner structure. Let's go and add a div block to the page and I am going to call this, uh, let's prefix everything here with FSCC. And I'm going to call this the banner. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use the same naming convention that we use in our clonable. I really like it. I think it totally works. Okay, we have the banner uh, and this is going to be the component. Great. So we are going to start putting this on the bottom of the page. Let's fix it to the bottom, make sure it's above all the other elements on the page. Now we're going to go and actually, we should probably go and copy this structure, this, uh, this prefix. Why are we using such a long prefix? It's important that you're not using things that can conflict with other classes on your site. If I were to just do banner here, maybe you have something on your site that's already called banner and that is not good. Also, when we get into option two and option three videos, you're going to see that you don't want your components to conflict with each other. So we wanna keep that banner term in there. That's this component. And we're going to call this the content. Let's go and add a margin auto to each site. That is absolutely not what you are supposed to see. And then we are going to auto this. And we're going to give a 100% width with a max width of, doesn't matter for this, but I'm just gonna call it 900. Great. Now let's go and let's go and add some text to the page here. I'm gonna go add a text block. I'm going to go copy and paste this message here. It is important to know that no matter which option you're using, you should have a privacy policy link in this messaging. You should have a link to the privacy policy giving the user more information about cookies and that doesn't matter which option you choose. Great, now I'm going to go and add a button here. I'm gonna use the button element for this walkthrough and where the heck is that? It's right here. And I'm going to call this 
Okay. Got it. Got it. Cool. All right, now let's go and add a little bit of structure here. I'm going to go and make this flex nice and easy for us. And I'm going to... Um, I'm going to make sure that this has a little bit of spacing and I'm, I'm also going to make sure that it doesn't shrink. So I'll go and call this the FSCC banner button. Cool. This is not going to do that. I will give it an arbitrary amount of 16. And there we go. Now we start to shape up here. So I'll go and put a little bit of padding here on both of the sides. Let's do a 16. And for fun, let's bump that up to 20 here. Cool. And we have our banner component. Actually, you know what? I don't want I don't want that. Let me take this off. I don't want the padding here on this. I like to keep the padding separate from our max width. I think it's a lot more clean like that. So I'll go and do this on the banner component. And for double fun, 20s all around. Okay, great. This is starting to shape up. Look at this. We are starting to see a banner on our page. Cool. Now, we've built the banner component. Let's go to step two. We look good here. And actually, since we're trying to be really fun today, I do want this emoji. So I'm going to go and try to add that. Yeah. Got to be fun. Especially when you're dealing with GDPR, you have to keep it light. So let's, let's keep that emoji in here. All right. Step two, we're going to add attributes to important elements. For informational message, we're required to add two attributes. First, FSCC banner to the entire banner element. Let's go do that. FSCC banner will go on this banner component. Let's see, do you need to zoom in here? No, that's plenty large. All right, we have FSCC. We're going to go banner, banner, cool. Back to the docs, and we have a close button. FSCC close on our OK button. So let's go and do that as well. We have FSCC close. Great. OK, step three, add the cookie consent for Webflow JavaScript file to your project. I'll go and copy it right here. And what I'm going to do is go into site settings. So I will go into the project settings and in project settings in custom code, I will place it in the head. For the informational version for this option one, it does not matter where it goes because we're not actually stopping cookies from running. The idea of having this is to properly show and hide this element. That's it. We're not actually doing anything with the script, so it doesn't matter where it goes. I'll go and save these changes. I will go and publish. And as we go and view this, we're going to see a cookie banner. Let's zoom in here. Great. Look at this cookie banner. Now, the reason we're doing this, the reason we're using something like FinSuite Cookie Consent is that when I press OK, got it, it's not going to show up again. So if I, if I reload the page, we reload, it's going to show we have the basic fade effect and then OK, got it. It's going to remember that I OK, got it. And then when I go and reload, we're not going to see this. And I'm glad this happened. Really glad you see this flashing. That should not be happening. And it shouldn't be happening because I need to go in designer and set this to display none. You should not have this visible on the page. We're trying our best to make sure it's not visible, but since it's initially visible, you're going to get that flash. So let's actually remove these cookies. I'll go and remove, remove. We bring this back and we are going to hide this like we're supposed to. And I'll go and republish. So we did the same steps. We're just going to leave this in display none for this published page. I'll go back here and now it's nice and clean. Look how much even cleaner this, this fade in is. Everything is nice and awesome. Okay, got it. Great. Now when I go and reload, we don't see any flashing because by default it is set to display none. And if I were to go 
and clear these cookies. Bam, cleared, reload. Nice. So that's what you're doing. That is the informational cookie message, option one. You have no more steps after this. This is the end of your video tutorial for setting up informational cookie message. Thanks for watching. Check out more FinSuite videos to keep learning Webflow.